Hey folks, Rich here at RCinformer.com. Today I have an upgrade for the StarMax F-18 that's definitely worth uh, adding to your airplane, and that is the addition of flaps. The plane lends itself very well to adding flaps. Uh, it's simply just cutting the flap out of the wing, hinging it, and adding a servo. And you run the wire, put it into your flap channel, and you now have working flaps. I added this to the airplane because um, as the airplane came from the manufacturer with the uh, landing gear pretty far behind the center of gravity, makes rotation uh, difficult and you have to run it out to a high speed and, uh, and in order to get the airplane to take off smoothly. But this, with the addition of flaps, adds uh, more camber to the wing uh, at the root and it also changes the uh, angle of attack of the wing at the root and uh, lets the airplane get up a lot sooner. Let's take a look at the operation of the flaps. As you can see I have two settings set up in there and uh, you can, uh, depending on your radio capability, uh, you can set up uh, uh, you know, several flap positions and you can even, uh, in, in several cases, slow the flaps down just like I did here. Uh, let's flip the airplane over and take a look at how it looks on the underside. Taking a look at the underside of the airplane, you can see uh, with a little airbrush work, you can really clean it up and make it look almost like it's a factory installed flap. Uh, it's a, a pretty, again, a pretty simple system of just cutting the flap out adding a horn and linkage and a servo, connecting it up to your radio, and uh, you're good to go. Uh, here's a look at how it works uh, underneath. And you can see it's a nice smooth flap and uh, it performs uh, quite nicely. Now let me show you some of the parts uh, that you're going to need to do this and then I'll take you step by step through the process of installing flaps on your StarMax F-18. To start off the flap uh, modification, the upgrade, uh, I thought I'd show you some of the parts that you're going to need uh, to make this happen. Really all we're going to do is with a sharp hobby knife, we're going to cut the uh, flap, existing flap panel out. Uh, and then we're going um, uh, to hinge it and we're going to put on a linkage. So uh, what you're going to need is uh, some sort of a linkage, uh, a, a horn to go through the uh, flap uh, and attach to the flap. You're going to need a clevis and a rod of some kind. Uh, you're also going to need a servo. I use these uh, Corona. Uh, 928 ball bearings, but you can use whatever you want. Um, uh, you'll also need some hinges to hinge, and the hinges I used were these that I got from uh, Hobby King. Uh, they seem to provide a nice wide hinge that was uh, pretty strong. Uh, these are part number, let's see, OR8-106 by 10, uh, but you can use any hinge you want. Any locally obtained uh, bullet type hinges will work just fine uh, as well. Um, uh, depending on your radio function and what you have, uh, you'll also uh, need one of these uh, adjustable, you may need one of these adjustable slow down servo speed regulators. Um, the nice thing about this is, uh, you know, I don't have the, uh, the, I only had one channel left for my flap, so um, this allows you to hook up, uh, up, up to three servos, but uh, let you hook up two uh, and reverse one direction and even slow them down. So uh, this uh, serves as a Y harness uh, for the servos. Uh, a reverser for one channel because you're going to have to reverse one and a slowdown mechanism so about seven dollars so it's a nice uh, little unit that uh, that works really well. Uh, you'll also need um, uh, just some scraps of a really thin balsa and a little bit of foam to fill in the gaps. Uh, anyway let's start into it and I'll show you how this all goes together. The first step is to simply cut the flap out. Now you want to use a new hobby knife and uh, some kind of a straight edge preferably something that's a uh, aluminum but what you're going to do is you're going to line it up as best you can on the center line of the of the of the panel line for the flap and very carefully you're going to cut a straight line along this edge you're also going to do the same for this edge right here you're just going to cut along that and what you want to do is you want to go halfway roughly halfway down and then you're going to flip the airplane over and do the same thing to the other side and carefully cut down and what you're going to do is you're going to meet in the middle of the foam uh, to get the, uh, and then once they meet up, the whole flap panel will just nicely come right out. You can see here, if you do a nice cut, that the, uh, the flap will come right out, and uh, you can go ahead and sand the surfaces and get everything uh, nice and smooth. When you sand down the flap, you want to make sure you use a sanding bar to make sure everything stays uh, nice and flush. Um, as you sand, you're going to remove a little material, and you don't really want to sand too much. If you do a perfect cut, then you won't need to add any wood at all, but it's really hard to get an exact perfect cut to make everything work out. You also want to check the size of each flap and make sure that uh, each flap is the, uh, the, the same size so when they come down it doesn't cause any uh, rolling with the airplane. But you notice I added some, some shims here and all that was was just uh, taking some, uh, some balsa, whatever thickness you need, 
Uh, this is like 1 32nd thin plywood so, or balsa wood. So, and you're just going to glue that on, glue it on here. I used a thicker piece on here. You can even see that this actually is uh, kind of beveled. It's actually at an angle. Um, and you're going to sand whatever you need uh, to get this to make uh, the perfect fit in there, to get it to fit exactly where you want it. And uh, so that, so that uh, when the leading edge surfaces are flush together, the trailing edge surface is, uh, is uh, lined up with, the, uh, with the, uh, um, the trailing edge of the wing. The next step is we're going to go ahead and uh, install the hinges. Now a lot of the foam on this airplane, guys, is, uh, is far from perfect. And uh, you know, you have some of these corners here that uh, are not really as, uh, as, uh, as, as square as you'd like them to be. And so what I did was I used some of this pink foam, and you can see right here I inserted some here. I just kind of I cut a notch, and then I stuck it right here, glued it in place, and then uh, with CA I just kind of soaked this with CA, and then I was able to sand this and get a nice true, nice uh, straight uh, square edge. So you want to use little bits of foam wherever you might need it. You know if you need to square off an edge or something like that and use some CA to harden it up and then you have a nice sandable surface and you can see you can get a pretty square surface out of all this um, and, and don't worry about so much what it looks like because uh, I'm going to airbrush this and it's going to look uh, really sharp uh, when it's all done. When installing the hinges you want to first start off by putting the hinges in the flap and uh, that's simply done uh, by uh, taking a, a needle file or a drill bit or something it doesn't really matter um, and just insert uh, uh, your uh, needle file and you're going to see you see roughly the angle that you're going to go at you're just going to sort of put it at a slight diagonal make sure, sure you don't go through the top surface of the flap but uh, anyway you're going to very carefully push that in it's very easy to do uh, and then uh, the next thing you're going to do is just take a, uh, a hobby knife and just very carefully just cut a little uh, sort of a rectangle out here and remove uh, some of the wood if you have wood there if not they'll just be foam and uh, you're also going to notch out a little bit here and a little bit here uh, to fit these little uh, angles that uh, come off the uh, hinge. Uh, if you're using bullet hinges, obviously you won't have to worry about this part. But then you go ahead and just insert that and you want to make sure that uh, you've got the corner of the pin okay, right at the corner of the bottom surface of the flap and that's how it's going to work. Same thing with this. You want to make sure that uh, you've got the corner uh, lined up uh, right here with the, uh, with the uh, center line of the pin. And then once you've got all three of these done, uh, you'll go ahead and uh, cut the surface the same way. Uh, in the uh, bottom of the wing. As you can see here, what you can do is just hold your flap up right where it goes and uh, you can go ahead and mark the spots in the foam where you're going to make uh, the three opposing holes. And then just like you did before, just go ahead and stick something in here diagonally. Make sure that uh, you, know, you don't go through the top surface of the wing. Just kind of be careful. And then uh, using a uh, hobby knife, just cut your, uh, your long angle here just right out of the foam. It's real easy to do guys because uh, foam is real workable. And then uh, go ahead and test fit everything in place. You can go ahead and insert, uh, insert your hinges and uh, just make sure everything fits into place. Everything should be flush. You want to look at the top side of the surface wing uh, too to make sure everything looks nice and flush. And uh, make sure your trailing edge here lines up. And uh, it looks like uh, the top and the bottom surface are nice and flush and everything's in place. So now we're ready to epoxy uh, everything in position. Now before gluing everything into place, uh, you want to do a couple things to, to prep everything. You're going to use 30 minute epoxy to glue everything together and you can very carefully, you can see right in this shot, uh, the oil uh, that I put on these. Uh, you're going to get, uh, you're gonna get uh, um, epoxy on these hinges and what you want to do is using an oiler, you want to oil the center of, uh, of all of these hinges and that will ensure that when the um, uh, glue or the epoxy uh, gets on that part of the hinge, which it will get on that part of the hinge, it won't bond to it. You want to be really careful also not to get any uh, oil on uh, this part of the hinge because again the epoxy won't stick to it and you want it to stick to that part. So anyway, uh, oil the hinges so you don't have any epoxy sticking and uh, the next thing you want to do here with this, let me back this out a little bit, is uh, you want to take your uh, flap and you can see what I did is I taped on a piece of um, uh, wax paper, okay? And what that's going to ensure is that the epoxy doesn't get on here, okay, and, uh, and bond to it. And uh, when you glue this thing together, uh, the way you're going to do this is you're going to mix some 30 minute epoxy and you're going to take uh, something small like a little piece of uh, metal rod or something and you're going to use it to shove down into this hole. So you're going to go ahead and get the epoxy in these three holes first, okay? 
And then once you have them in those three, you're going to take a paintbrush and you're going to brush uh, the end of the hinges. Then you're going to pick up the hinges, you're going to put each hinge in here one at a time, and now you have your hinges sticking out of your flat. Then you're going to go ahead and put glue in, um, in these three slots that are in the wing, okay? And then you're going to insert them in there. Now as you do this, epoxy is going to sort of ooze out of there. And as that's going on, you want to clean up as much as you can so there's not a whole bunch of epoxy uh, on this surface. And there probably won't be very much because uh, you don't really need a whole lot of epoxy for this. And then once this is all together, and the hinges are together like that, you can pretty much leave it like that till it dries. Now as it dries, maybe 20 minutes into it, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you can kind of exercise it a little to make sure that this thing is uh, not uh, sticking together. And really it shouldn't because of this wax paper. And in the meantime, you can use some alcohol and towels and you can go ahead and you can rub all this down. You can also lift up the hinge, clean up the inside here, clean up this part, and just make sure that, uh, that there isn't any epoxy that's going to glue this whole flap into place. Anyway, that's the procedure guys, that's how we're going to do it. With the previous step complete, uh, allow the glue to dry thoroughly and uh, you can see uh, we have a nice uh, working hinge in here now and it stops in the up position. As the glue is drying, you usually have uh, you know, way more than a half hour. You can get in here uh, with uh, alcohol and towels and just kind of clean up any, any epoxy that might be in there. Same thing on the outside here, you can just rub it down with epoxy and uh, you're good to go. Uh, the next step really is to get the servo in so you can kind of plan on uh, finding your servo and uh, finding a location to put it. Uh, I'm going to put it uh, roughly uh, in this position here. Um, it, it's your choice uh, whether you want to leave these tabs on or not. I actually removed my tabs, so what I did is I took a set of, uh, of uh, flush cutters, really, and uh, just kind of cut them off like this. And that gets all that, the tabs off, because you really don't need those. And uh, it's a sort of a pain in the neck to try and cut a hole uh, in the uh, in the side of the um, or cut a hole in the foam uh, to have those little tabs like the like the uh, like the uh, whatever machine did that for uh, the molding uh, for the stock servo. So anyway, you can do the same thing and just sort of line this up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up so my clevis and everything is right over this center point or or over this uh, center hinge. So the screws actually go around that center part of the hinge. So it's it's actually pulling on the middle part of the uh, of the flap. So uh, anyway, we're going to locate a position here uh, where we want it to go. And again, you guys can kind of put where you put it where you want it. Uh, and once you have that uh, servo in the position you want it in, you just sort of hold it and you take a hobby knife and just sort of trace a line. Just cut a little line right around it, uh, and uh, you know, make sure you include the uh, the horn and everything, and uh, just kind of carve around it. And uh, then you can remove your servo. Now you have a pattern to go by, and you can go ahead and cut deep down into it and uh, just remove foam little at a time until you get at the depth that you want. Now once you have your initial lines traced out guys you can do anything you want to get this stuff out of here. I usually just draw a couple of lines like a grid or something and uh, you know once you got that grid cut you can take almost any tool that you have just your epoxy or a hobby knife and just start removing this stuff. It comes out really easy and with your initial lines cut it'll cut right to those lines. So it's real easy to get this stuff out of here. It's just foam, guys, and it just tears up uh, real easy. So uh, just get the rest of it out, and uh, uh, I'll show you how to finish the bottom section. Now with most of the hole uh, already uh, almost all the way down to the bottom, what you want to do is just take a little piece of wood with a piece of uh, the sticky back sandpaper in the bottom, and uh, you just go ahead and take it here, and you scrape the bottom of this because you don't want a real rough surface down here because what we're going to do is we're going to tack glue it down with some contact cement just like all the other servos are put in uh, and that way uh, we can get them out if we need to and change them uh, instead of having some kind of permanent glue job in place so really it's going to be just like the others uh, if you want to change over to a fine grit sandpaper at the end uh, you can do that but as you can see just from doing a little of this work I now have a nice smooth surface at the bottom that uh, I can contact cement uh, this uh, servo into place again, just like the others. Here's the uh, finished servo uh, inside of its uh, case. If you guys take your time with it, um, you'll get a really nice, uh, almost looks like it came from the factory uh, servo mounted in there. Um, another thing that I did too that you'll see from uh, this shot here is I went ahead and I changed the wire on the servo. And uh, you don't have to do this, but um, uh, I did it for, for two reasons, really. 
Um, one, uh, this wire was uh, just very, very thick. And, uh, and it didn't really need to be that thick. And I wanted to use sort of a slightly thinner gauge wire um, so I could run it uh, uh, through this channel uh, along with the aileron wire servo. Uh, the other thing, too, is, is that it wasn't very long. So, um, you know, first of all, being thick, trying to get it through here was tough. And then it was also going to stop here. So I would have to put another extension of some kind uh, up here on the top where, where, the, uh, where the foam is. So rather than mess with it, uh, I just unscrewed the, the bottom of the uh, servo case and with a really small soldering iron just went ahead and took the, uh, uh, took the uh, old wire off and just soldered a, a new one. This is uh, actually one of these uh, Hobby King extensions and I just cut the end off the, uh, uh, off the other side and just used this. I think it's uh, 40 centimeters long. So as you can see, being thinner, it fits through this channel a whole lot better. It'll go all the way up through here, and it'll actually fit even into the, uh, into the servo compartment or the, uh, the battery area. And, uh, and then I can uh, re-tape over all of this and cover it up and paint over it, and you won't even see it. Anyway, next thing is on to getting the linkage in place. When installing the control horn on the flap, we're going to do pretty much just like we did uh, with the servo. We're just going to line up our horn where we want it. We're going to make sure it's the same as the other side and just trace around it carefully. We're going to get this uh, little tiny box and we're just going to go ahead and very carefully just take a little bit of this out so this will countersink uh, into the flap. Uh, we're going to do the same thing on the other side, okay, after we put some holes through here. We're going to put the, do the same thing on the other side with the backing plate, okay, and that's going to go here and uh, again we'll trace it out and we'll countersink it as well. Just like we did before with the servo tray, once we have this thing uh, all cut, uh, we're going to take just a little piece of wood with a little bit of sandpaper on the end of it, uh, some 220 grit or so, and uh, we're going to take it and we're going to just uh, go ahead and sand the bottom of this to make it nice and smooth, okay? Once it's nice and smooth, you want to take some CA and uh, you're going to soak this thing with it and get, it, uh, get the uh, uh, foam to absorb uh, a bunch of the CA and uh, let it soak in. And uh, then when you're done, you know, just take a paper towel and kind of blot it out of there. And what that's going to do is as it absorbs, it's going to make this thing uh, nice and tough and strong. So when you actually put this thing on, it's going to be much more secure than if you just left the, the bare foam there. Uh, do the same thing on this side. Uh, as you can see, it's, uh, you do the, just do the same thing with it. Soak, uh, soak some uh, CA in it. And, uh, and then uh, when it all dries, just uh, go ahead and reinstall your horn and uh, you're, uh, you're good to go. When you're ready to install your servo, you're going to take some uh, contact cement and uh, just like I already did here, you're going to glob some onto the bottom of the servo and uh, let it sit for a little bit, uh, for just a couple of minutes, let it kind of set up and get a little bit thick so it's tackier. Uh, and also make sure you have a trench right here. You've cut a little notch with your knife for your wire to go in. Um, I've had this sitting for a couple of minutes, so I'm ready to put it in now. So just go ahead and uh, just drop it in place. This is pretty much how most of these servos are mounted, is just with a dab of glue at the bottom. I used a little more than you really need, but uh, since this is a flap servo and it's going to be under a lot of load, I want to make sure it's really on there. But you still want to be able to get it off at a later date. Um, now, once you have that servo in, you know, go ahead and push it in there, let it, uh, let it dry. And at the same time, uh, you can see, you can go ahead and uh, route your, uh, your wire for your servo. Uh, into the center. Just go ahead and carefully push it in there, uh, get it to go all the way around and get it to go up into the middle and uh, you can connect it to your uh, uh, servo reverser and slow down mechanism. Now with your radio turned on and uh, everything all set in the position you want everything at, um, you can just go ahead and take your, uh, your rod that you, you know, either pre-cut or pre-bent with a Z-bend in it. Uh, make sure you use fuel tubing on it and uh, just get your rod on there. Again, you can use any rod, any linkage, any kind of connector you want. Usually you want to determine this whole package, you know, beforehand. It helps you place the servo, too. Um, but uh, anyway, and that's it. It's all set. Uh, and you go ahead and uh, test your flaps out with your switch. And you can see uh, it works perfectly. You can adjust the throw of this and, uh, you know, have more flaps or less flaps. Um, it's entirely up to you. Your radio has the settings and the features and the functions, so you can uh, either increase or decrease the throw of that servo and get the desired flap that you want. When hooking up your two flap uh, servos, you're going to need uh, one of the servos reversed. And if you don't have a radio with enough channels uh, to do that electronically, you're going to need something else uh, uh, like this uh, Turnigy servo speed regulator. They're about seven or eight bucks. Uh, definitely worthwhile to, to, to do it this way. This is what I have in mind. Um, the only odd thing about it is you need a double-ended lead. You notice these are both uh, two, uh, two of the same plugs. 
I buy these little uh, connectors from Hobby King and I make up my own leads uh, to whatever size I need them. And in this case, I made up a small lead, plugged it into this channel right here, and then this one goes right into the uh, receiver. From here, this just acts as a Y harness. You can see there's, uh, you can put up to three servos here. In this case, we're just going to put two on there. One into channel three and one into channel one. Channel three, we can rotate one of these pots and reverse it. So now they're moving in opposite directions, which allows both flaps to move up and down at the same time with the flick of one switch from your radio. Um, this thing acts as three things, really. Uh, it acts as a Y harness, it acts as a reverser, and also as a slowdown mechanism because we can trim the two other pots to slow the flaps as they come down and slow them as they come up. So anyway guys, at about seven or eight bucks, uh, it's a nice way to go and a nice way to get your flaps uh, working in the correct direction. For the purposes of this flap installation video, at some point you have to remove this plastic piece to get under here to run the, uh, the additional flap wire uh, from this side and from this side. So in order to get this plastic piece off, you know, you're just gonna very carefully uh, pull this thing off and uh, you don't have to, but it's a good idea to remove the uh, contact cement like I did. And again, this thing just very carefully, just peel it off. Uh, I had already had mine removed because I was replacing the ESC and putting a new electric fan motor in and uh, redoing uh, these landing gear wells for some of the other videos on this plane that you guys can check out on RC Informer. Um, uh, but anyway, for the purpose of this video, um, again, I, you just remove it real easy. And when you're ready to get it back on, when you got all your wires run, uh, you're going to go ahead and uh, just go ahead and just use some contact cement around the edge of this thing, uh, right where you saw it when you took it off. Give it a few minutes to set up and get tacky, and then you know, you're gonna go ahead and very carefully just kind of stick it back into place, and uh, it should stick almost instantly. And then once it's on there, it's bonded, you're good to go. And here is the finished product. As you can see, I covered up the, uh, the uh, wire channels with some scotch tape, and they pretty much disappear with a little bit of airbrushing right over the top of them. It cleans the airplane up nicely. I use this uh, Sky Gray. This is uh, Tamiya's XF19. Uh, it's pretty much nearly a perfect paint match uh, for this airplane. Let's take a look at the flap in operation one more time. As you can see, it's nice and smooth, guys. It's definitely worth putting in. It's cheap, easy to install, and it really helps the uh, Starm XF18 uh, get airborne in a much shorter distance. Anyway, guys, that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. Please subscribe and uh, stay tuned. We got more videos on the way. We'll see you next time.